So what fears have you overcome in your life and how did you do it? Share your story, your vulnerability, um, may really help someone else, okay? So consider that by just sharing, that's what we do, we just wanna share. Maybe it makes you a little bit more vulnerable, but it's okay, right? So just do that out of the love of wanting to help other people because we're not in this journey by ourselves. Okay? So what fears are you still working to overcome? What still holds you back? And that's the key that so often the fears that are holding us back from really coming alive. We're born alive to have a life. And <clears throat> soon as we, you know, come in, we, we do get conditioned immediately, okay, through our parents. And of course, we inherit their experiences and their impressions of what life is all about. And so our conditioning starts immediately from your mom and your dad or whatever your social structure might be and then immediately everybody else around you. And pretty soon we'll kind of graduate from that and maybe the various forms of um, institutions, daycare, baby care, whatever, day, you know, all the different things, um, preschool, and then we fall into the system and we then get really, we should be getting educated, but we basically end up getting more indoctrinated, okay? So it's very important, like, um, <clears throat> to keep ourselves aware of what life is and how we're all kind of, how do we fit in life? And I think this is where um, a lot of people have issues with. It's, um, you know, develop the skills to, how to develop, how to express yourself. And I think this is where, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are bottled up. And as individuals, we are what? We are creators, okay? And we're meant to create things. But instead, a lot of those things can immediately get suppressed because we are told as to what we become, perhaps, or as we go and grow up and, you know, often, then this gets reinforced. What do you want to become? Oh, and somebody might, you know, young boy maybe say a fireman or a policeman or whatever and that's used to be and today it might be you know some some other expressions but I give you this as an ex examples and they aspire themselves to be like that well <clears throat> and so so much of this kind of conditioning takes place but then the heart is kind of left empty because it isn't necessarily you right it's just trained thinking but the heart may be telling you something else. And the, the problem with that is then, you know, it's like while we are even being formed as a fetus, it's the heart, mind that was given all the instructions to the body, um, keeping us alive and so on. And then when our brain mind gets conditioned, we basically get indoctrinated, we become programmed, and that starts to rationalize more. You know, and it's then all becomes as to what stigmas, um, what you should be doing, what you should look like, what you should have, okay? So, so often when we do talk to each other, even when we meet each other and we greet each other, we say, hey, how are you doing? So, so much today is about doing and Oh, and having, and that's where the insecurities, well, if I'm not doing like what they're doing or if I'm not having as to what they're having, oh, I'm in lack, right? But truly, um, most people, if we start to really kind of approach them, hey, how are you, right? Um, that's kind of like coming from the heart. And I think that um, when people open up and even in seeing that video from Princess Diana, for example, she says she didn't fit in and they wanted to get rid of her. So was that part of her being pushed out and being, whatever, assassinated or however, um, you can draw conclusions to that. But it's quite interesting in, in her kind of comment because she wanted to be a queen that was leading from the heart. And so be more heart-minded, okay? And, and so being mindful and coming kind of from the heart. And I think then that 
is how we can start expressing ourselves more. Now, <clears throat> my own um, personal experience, um, you know, as a, as a child, I was extremely shy. I barely spoke. I was afraid to express myself in words and in many other ways. And it helped me back for the longest time. And I've, because of my shyness, and nobody really able to kind of help me to come out of that shell, I had to, to do that. And it's taken really a lifetime to kind of develop in you know, circumstances and you know, lessons from life, so it was good. But you know, my earlier years under uh, um, my parental uh, help and so on and rearing and upbringing. And I know that many people do. And, um, you know, we then, then today is like the tendency is, okay, I'm a victim. You know, we got to get past the victim mode, okay, because I can claim being a victim for many other things. And then uh, those who were your parents, uh, your caregivers, they also, you know, came from some place, some mindset that has conditioned them, and we then transpose this over. And so, anyways, I, I was born in uh, Dutch New Guinea near Australia. I have a background, part Indonesian, part Dutch, part German. And, <clears throat> you know, all I can just simply say that my parents did the best. They knew what to do for me. And, um, <clears throat> and so, I know that they love me, and um, that they do always the right thing, not necessarily, because they didn't understand. And so it's again, you know, if we get to become more educated in those areas as to how we can help other people, then we can be more effective in those areas. But it's a process, and you know, as you kind of grow up, you become responsible for your own actions and acquiring the skills, okay? because it requires skill to help express yourself, okay? If you, you know, whether it's in arts, it's in music, or even in speaking, or whatever you wish to create, okay? So develop the kind of skills, and I think this is what has to take place. So we break through certain barriers, certain sh shells, and we all have it, okay? We all need to shift into a different mode of things and become real, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, where we were living, it was really simple, a lot of jungle around us. Um, found myself, and I did enjoy nature an awful lot, just wandering off into the jungle, down in the rivers, observing things, maybe go hunting and stuff like that, and that was great. But I think my biggest challenge um, came and I can see this for an awful lot of people, is to, by the time I was ready to go into the formal education system, and I didn't fit in very well, and um, I didn't learn very much. And so I was a poor reader, a poor learner, because I was in fear of the system. I was in fear of the people that were educating me. So I know that because of my poor ability to uh, learn that level and poor performance according to their way of grading things. Um, so I wasn't being accommodated in a way that I could break out of my shell. But, you know, it's that level of understanding that they had. So I remember the teachers coming to our house and visiting with my parents. It was like nowadays we have peer, uh, parent teachers and parents come to the school <laughs> where we were living. It was a pretty small place. so the teacher would have visited in, at, at our home. And I was sort of like basically downgraded as being dumb, okay? Um, and so my father wanted to help um, teach me how to read. And I remember times um, that he would have me sitting there and reading something and I would just, I tried to do everything from memory but my mind, my brains would just sort of freeze up. And I make anything up from any words and it didn't make any sense. Of course, <laughs> he didn't uh, like that because he would go over and over and he would get very angry. So I was made 
to feel like I was stupid, okay? And <clears throat> so I kind of grew up with that kind of a stigma for a long time. And so all the years in school, I kind of had that with me. Learning was hard. Um, and I remember um, when we moved into, um, you know, from New Guinea to Holland, 1962, ending up in a different school system. And again, just the change taking me from where I was living and where I was comfortable into a whole new part of thinking, living, and everything else have to transform. That didn't um, make it easy for me either, but just being sort of plunked into the school and um, where things were different. And there too, I was um, being graded as Oh, this person is never going to accomplish much. He has got not an ac academic mind at all. And so, well, there you go, you know, being told who perhaps you, what you might be able to do with your life. So, you know, more fear, okay, what am I gonna do with my life? More insecurity. But I remember making a couple of real successes, okay, in that, um, I was to kind of graduate out of elementary school and the education system there was a little bit different. So they grade you as to places you would go to. And you can go to kind of like immediately into vocational training, you can go into more of an academic, there's different levels that you could go and if you're very smart, of course you go to the top and it wasn't a lack of smarts, it was just fear. And <clears throat> so it was required for me to write some exams in order to be accepted at this one particular level. And um, I did it. I, I scored one of the highest rankings. And, but I remember preparing myself for the sessions. I was totally in tears. And even in the earlier days and when I was being uh, taught how to read, uh, it was painful, very painful. A lot of tears shed over, you know, being able to even read. But anyway, so, I made it, and it made me feel good. And I was able to um, do relatively good in areas. Well, after three years being there, we made another transition and come into Canada. And um, so 1965, arrived into Canada and went to high school. I had a grade eight level. And so here I come, very little knowledge of English. and, and <laughs> The craziest thing is that I thought I knew some English, but when they were teaching you this in, in Europe, um, in Holland, it was more like the English, the Oxford type of English. So you learn words that North American English um, didn't recognize. <laughs> and so it was quite embarrassing when I uh, would remember my first day in high school. Here I come. I look a little bit different, dressed a little bit different, and um, people would look at me a little bit different, okay? So immediately you're being judged and so you want some helps and, and people sort of like, well, you're an outsider and things get to be kind of cliquey. But I remember going to the store, my dad says, okay, just ask for this, and say it this way. I would go to the store and they look at me and it's like they don't understand. They laugh at me and all I go and it's kind of like, you know, your tail between your legs, like you feel defeated. Like, what? I couldn't do this transaction. And you felt totally put down and embarrassed. So likewise, went into school. And new environment. Um, and I simply asked some of the guys, I thought, well, they should be pretty friendly. Hey, can you tell me I need to go and use the WC? which in you know, English, English, they would understand it to be the water closet. And that's so, the young guys, they didn't understand what the, what the WC or water closet meant. And so I finally had to sort of somehow demonstrate it, you know, just tell them like, I need to go, psst. Oh, you mean the John? Now I am totally confused. <laughs> what do you mean the John? I don't need, go see John, <laughs> I need to go to the washroom. <laughs> and 
Anyways, totally embarrassed, totally felt defeated from that. So again, you know, fear of expression, fear of criticism really kind of came in. And I felt like that small. So all during that time, uh, very much in earlier years in high school, I would speak very softly. And my friend, um, Peter Policy would say, speak up. I can't hear you. You're whispering. <laughs> and that was my fear, fear of expression, just even in speaking. And I think it's very important to be able to express yourself that way. Now, I will say one thing, that there's many ways that we can express and however, you know, um, express yourself, okay? It's very important and become good at it. And I make nowadays to help other people and if I see something about them and I walk into somewhere and they're working at a place whether they're a cashier or a door welcomer and there's a smile on their face I say thank you for that smile please keep on doing this this makes my day okay so and yeah you want to encourage people okay because um, we need more people smiling out there and I think that this, that's kind of like um, you know like sunshine really okay so just as much as saying kind words and inspiring words, okay? So I think that's what kind of had to happen, you know, is like inspiration, okay, which kind of comes from within. And <clears throat> I um, had to be kind of inspired. And somehow, somewhere along the line, it was another way of wanting to express myself and learn to play a little bit of guitar and um, got together with a few guys um, and in high school, and I started playing the bass guitar. And, um, and that was kind of a way that I would feel myself become one with, okay, when I'm playing the bass. And man, we played a lot of blues and rock and things like that, and really kind of enjoyed it because it was a way to kind of escape and help express myself as well. So I'm thankful for having had that ability and, and even to bring it out and working with some of the guys and all the jams that we did. And it was just sort of like a way of creating. And I knew that it felt so good. Okay, so in the end, it's also about when you're doing things, when you're creating, you're also creating a feeling from you. Okay, things start to, to kind of resonate. Um, and so, but Dealing with school was still, um, you know, a difficult thing. Came hard, very hard. So got out of high school, and my dad, with all his good intentions, always wanted me to, to get the uh, help in, in, in terms of moving on and getting some kind of a academic um, education, okay? Which I moved into. I uh, went to. BCIT, um, Institute of Technology, and I went in with electronics. Okay, so that's where I thought that's what I wanted to be. And I visualized myself after I made that choice to do something um, on the technical side of things, working on things, okay, working on machines, and you know, then that way I don't have to really expose myself too much in communication with people. I can do my things, work with machines, okay, be in my own little world there. But somehow life has taken its course that it kept on pushing me out, kept on pushing me out, which I'm really thankful for, okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, even there, school didn't come easy. I ended up working, and I definitely, you know, learned how to work and apply myself, and so I did a uh, bunch of jobs and even while I was going to school I was working too hard so it you know I had to do some additional courses or spend an extra, extra term in there to help me graduate and because um, yeah it was easy going always wanting to uh, in in that sense help people and so here I'm working I was asked to do extra things I committed myself it did end up costing me really in my schooling because I was working so hard and trying to go to full-time going to school. It was almost impossible, hardly ever sleeping and going to school, studying, and going to work. And uh, it just about, well, did me down. I, I know it was times I was so tired even 
I was starting to hallucinate, she thinks, okay, because I wasn't getting enough sleep. So that didn't go <laughs> come easy, but I made it through, okay, and having that relative success made me feel good. Um, moving on from there, I know all these different things uh, kind of came about for a reason. Nothing is just sort of like, um, you know, sometimes we interpret the word coincidence as like kind of like an accident. You know, it's not supposed to happen, but coincidence is like the word coincide. It means things are, were meant to happen. So everything in life was meant to happen. I kind of from there went on and um, I ended up doing a job as a technician and I said, okay, this is good. Promised um, a whole bunch of training, but that didn't happen. I think I spent about a week in training, and there I go out in the field repairing machines. And the next thing is, okay, I got a knock on doors. And I was doing photocopier repairs. And next thing is I was asked to sell um, service contracts. And um, so now I really have to start speaking to people, okay? But it was making me a little bit of money. It was giving me a little bit of extra pocket money. So somehow, like, whoa, hey, I sold 10 service contracts. There's another, whatever, $300 a month here. And so kind of, you know, saw the reward in that. So somehow I kind of got connected and it allowed me then to break through the barriers. Two years into that cycle, I go into sales. Now, <laughs> that was a big challenge because now I really got to start communicating with people. And I remember walking up the doors with people like doctors and lawyers, and I really looked up at people, these professional people, as being, you know, almost like gods, I guess, in a way, you know, they were, they were really something. And I was nothing, okay? So um, as I go into these places and did what I had to do and repair and ask people what's going wrong, anyway, so I had to communicate more with people, okay, express myself and listen to people and do a good job, which I always wanted to do, do the, do the right job, do the right thing, okay, do the best that I can do. Um, <clears throat> I started to see into the lives of some of these people because sometimes I was there after they um, closed the practice and some of the guys would have some drinks and, and then I started to, and then in some occasions I ended up at some parties with these people. Hey, these are normal people. <laughs> and they got their baggage too. So it was kind of like, okay. So you start feeling better about yourself, okay? So, um, but here's a whole other story that is kind of helped me. And, you know, everything is kind of like, um, you know, breaking through the fears. Again, false evidence appearing real. We've been kind of conditioned, maybe through other people, or we've brought things into, um, <clears throat> you know, absorbed these things somehow through so reading or our own interpretations as to what these things are, or who these people are, and so we live with concepts that are untrue. Anyway, so it's a lot more I can add to it, but to kind of like where some of the biggest uh, changes started to take place. Um, as, um, you know, even in relationships, uh, you know, with, with people it was sometimes, yeah, it was, was difficult, like, you know, um, to really kind of connect. Um, I held a lot of things back. And, but as I turned 26, I um, met my wife, Janine, and, um, we got married, and it was um, it was good. It was good. Uh, and she's been a very good support to me over the years, and a good catalyst to also breaking out. We all have our dynamics, and um, you know. So it ended up being that you know again, we can learn from others, and who has been uh, I've learned a lot through her, and I've learned a lot through my children, and this is where kind of reality uh, really started to change. Because there was, in my family, um, there were hers. So I, I got a 40-year-old uh, son. Um, there's ours, and there's theirs. We adopted a few children. 
and uh, three as a matter of fact. So there's five children that I went through, three generations of um, uh, children. So boy, and the dynamics there <laughs> were really pretty immense, you know, the different backgrounds and, you know, and so here I kind of reflect as I was being uh, put into these situations as to um, how do you deal with it? Well, you know, you got your conditioning. So I was really being raised in an old construct of family thinking, philosophies, you know, all these aspects. So, you know, you reflect on that. You reflect on your parents and everything else and how they would handle, wow, what an awakening it was. Because first of all, um, in many of these, when, when it's not your own flesh and blood, <laughs> there's many other dynamics. And you have to filter out, okay, uh, some of these ideas that you have as you can apply. There are certain principles that are always good, and one of them is always like, you know, learn to love them all regardless, okay? And, um, and I mean, even others challenged as we went into uh, the mode of thinking of adopting. You want to do what, <laughs> you know? And um, so there was difficult situations, and, you know, are, are they, do you really think they're yours, right? And to me, doesn't matter where they came from. I, I learn, I drop a lot of the barriers, a lot of the fears, okay? And um, so, yeah, each one of them taught me different lessons and allowed me to come through the barriers. And really, the barriers were within me, okay? Um, and it's just like, yeah, the challenges without having to go into the details, but I now really value, okay, where they have taken me on my journey and um, allowed me to yeah, become who, who I have become, really, okay? And so, but I knew ever since I was young, it was always this, about helping other people, right? Even as a child, um, teenager, I was always in that mode. How can I best help people? Because so, um, not just focus on me, Okay, and it's, that's where it's, this part of things has taken me. But there were many of the fears, you know, fears of criticism, fears of um, not being competent, uh, fears of failure, okay? So, but I've kind of gone out on a limb into the unknown many times. And this is where um, life becomes, um, I think, you know, quite interesting. And, so life itself then can help to educate. But I nowadays kind of, you know, look at how much more. On a daily basis, I'm a student and I can learn. And I can learn from anyone, anything that has happened if I want to. So, and to become more, you know, transparent. Um, allow yourself to be vulnerable and if it hurts, it's okay, right? Because if it's, it's kind of like, you know, we, we do for our bodies, we detoxify, we do cleansing processes, but because there's so many layers to us, okay? We need to cleanse, we need to detoxify. So toxic thoughts, things that we've been taught, again, indoctrinated, not educated really, but indoctrinated, okay? False concepts, okay? Um, false emotions, um, you know, we are what, you know, yes, we are the physical body and we definitely need to take care and place emphasis because this is kind of the vehicle that gets us through this journey. I put huge emphasis on it, okay, and that's where my background, my studies have been just so much, okay, about uh, what I want to do. And I'm thankful that I'm given this opportunity today to be here to enjoy a relatively great uh, quality of health, okay? Um, <clears throat> I don't feel 66, I don't move like 66, I don't think like the average 66 year old. I feel like, um, and I took that, again, it was coming from a mindset at um, 60 where I said, reset, 40, okay? This is my new beginning. And so as my children have grown up and they're working out their own dynamics and things, 
I now um, can allow myself to kind of become more, um, you know, what can I say, bring to the surface, become more of who I think I really need to be, okay? And, and that need to kind of, you know, learn things to help um, people along on their journey, okay? So things didn't come easy, but I'm thankful because it's kind of like, you know, how things are formed. We know uh, with the butterfly, as it uh, once was a worm, okay? And it had to come out of its co cocoon. Um, again, the, the chicken coming and breaking out of the egg, it had to break out the shell, okay? So if whatever the shell you need to break up, it could be um, a prison, you know? And the mind could be the prison, you know? It could be holding you back. It be, could be holding you in fear, okay? And we know that, um, you know, through all the different levels. So again, we're uh, spirit, soul, mind, emotion, consciousness, and then this physical body, okay? So we have to recognize that too, okay? And I see that. I'm thankful that really every day as I work with, you know, clients and different levels, it's often from a physiological standpoint, people are in pain, but you can also then experience and see as now uh, I work with them um, by just talking more, and I'm thankful for being able to give that ability to, you know, communicate better. One time I wasn't. I did never think that I would be where I am today, but there was a deep burning desire, right? So if there's a spark, let the spark become a fire, and where that fire, let it become like a raging fire, okay? Because if that's the inspiration, you know, that needs to kind of set in and to help set, set you free, okay? And we know that, um, so we're all meant to be creators. So you want to create an effective life. And then if you have family, you want to um, inspire them to do the same thing, okay? Because so often, um, it's like with, with my children, they have to make their own choices. Uh, I'll help them, I will coach them. Um, but I would not necessarily, so you can be a guide and help them to develop the things that they're good at or perhaps that they want to be and, and go for. And in this world, too many people find themselves going, taking courses and courses and courses and, you know, spending um, hundreds of thousands of dollars perhaps on educating themselves, a so-called educating themselves. And sometimes yeah, a lot of these things probably are very worthwhile, but a lot of times people are professional students and they come out and um, they can't really materialize it in anything because, you know, it's just, uh, um, you know, how real is that, right? So anyways, that's just sort of somewhat of an observation. Um, and so it's thinking out of the box, okay? Coming out of that shell, allowing yourself um, become a little bit vulnerable, right? Hang on on the edge sometimes. And um, I've been there many times, done many things, and have failed because the fears have set in. And, but it's okay, you know, to, to fail. It's like little one falls down, maybe hits his head on the ground, cuts, scrapes, bleeding, yeah, a little bit of blood, a little bit of gore. <laughs> sometimes these things happen in many different ways. But hey, if you're still alive, again, you're born alive to have a life, so keep on creating the life you're meant to have, okay? And keep in mind, too, that it's just not just you, but you're connected to everything, you know, your part. It's kind of like the ecology. We talk about the ecology. When we talk in the ecology and we observe, everything works together in the ec ecology. Trees and plants, they have their root structure embedded with each other. They share, they communicate, okay? They work together, right? And we're just part of that, okay? And so we need to see that more and express ourselves and conduct ourselves more in that whole way that we want to be, you know, the, um, the Western way of thinking very often is like, um, you know, lording over, controlling, right? We want to control everything, control everything. Uh, we don't trust nature, so we got to control nature. And But yet, how is it that we're all part of nature? And <clears throat> so that's what we need to do. We need to, you know, trust nature, 
and um, you know work with it all okay so whatever however you want to see your life go break through fears we, we're all part of all of that okay and when we try to exclude ourselves and just keep everything to ourselves and just be ourselves yes be yourself but see it in the expression of the overall thing so that you can come from contribution you know nature kind of comes and expresses itself the sun shines on everybody the rain falls on everybody okay and contributes the plants they grow irregardless okay and uh, there would be enough food there today if it wasn't for some people wanting control and hoarding it all okay there is abundance but it's in the mind where we've kept back that and we have set limitations okay and then the control systems have set limitations on everything else you do this you get this okay whereas in nature doesn't uh, work that way so um, don't be an enslaved thinker but be a creative thinker and you know as creators today particularly the way technology moves okay um, it's kind of, you know, they're creating drones and AI and robots. And they perhaps want us to become more like that. So enjoy the technology, use it, but use it properly, okay? And use it to help you create, but do not, uh, you know, because what happens with a lot of people, they, we get occupied with things and then they take over, okay? More people spend time watching things and people watching other people and few people are actually active living in life, doing things, and we just become observers. But it's more important also in what you do. So act out. So we, we need to participate in the, uh, in the world. And so don't just get preoccupied with other things and then what do we do? We're living other people's lives. Okay, no, you're born alive to have a life, so figure that one out, okay? Get through maybe the fears, right? Again, false evidence appearing real. You're being told who you are, what you need to do, what you need to have, you know? The, the one thing to kind of look at, it's, you know, this whole thing about money, money as a system, okay? Um, it controls so much about us okay and you know it's a lack of money and people feel it's a lack it's a lack i need to have more and so that kind of keeps us on this uh, treadmill okay of wanting to make more and they keep on raising the bars everything costs more costs more costs more and you know it's just it is an enslavement system okay and we allow that to happen where in our minds Okay, we don't have to go that route, really. Um, so, we are people, we are powerful, okay? And we just look at what we have created, okay, around us, all the different things, the beautiful things that people have created with their hands. But it first began in their, in their hearts, in their minds, something, the desires come out and people create all kinds of things. So, be a participant keep creating start creating if you haven't okay and come from contribution okay um, if we all came from that place uh, we change things I mean you just think of now because there's issues around the financials and the, and the money systems so hey people are coming out with things like um, Bitcoin and all these things okay <laughs> so why not and let's just kind of keep on creating and, and um, don't just leave the creating part up to, oh, they'll create this thing. The system will create this thing. Do your part. It's so important to kind of come through. Um, and you know, that when you take the steps, whatever your levels of fears are in those areas, it will free you, okay? Because it's like breaking the barriers. I know um, I was put into certain things, okay, certainly with my children when they uh, were growing up and because of the challenges that they had and they put me into, well, I, I guess I chose them. <laughs> so um, it was kind of like, okay, now what? And I remember times was daily, massive challenges. And when I come home, going to work was easy. Coming home was really when the work started for me. And it just transformed, okay? Um, 
do not just think about, you know, we, they have us to be conformed, okay? But what we really need to do is we need to be transformed, okay, to become more you, okay? Uh, to become the creator you are meant to be, okay? And so, yes, takes maybe some levels of detoxification, um, you know, and then, hey, what is life? It's, it's, a, it's a dance, life is a game. Um, again, you know, develop the skills to live this life, you know, being able to express, being able to speak, communication, smile, uh, move, all these different things, okay? Um, when our focus gets on uh, money and, and the fear of not having enough money, uh, look at it, when we focus on that, um, even those that have a lot of money, those that are controllers of the world, okay? Uh, the money masters, they're not happy people, okay? Look at the wars, okay? They're creating more and more wars. It's war on the people, okay? Because they're not satisfied with just having money. They need power. They feel that they have power when they can lord themselves over the people and go into this mode of destruction. You know, it's like a, a fly gets to be a bit of a pest and you take the fly swatter and you whack it. And he says, gone, that one, he's a pest. And that's sort of like maybe the attitude that's developed. I don't know, I'm just sort of thinking out, you know. Um, you know, so there's feelings that we can get, um, so, you know, but I think the greatest feeling is when we learn, okay? Move forward, do whatever you can do, even if it's a little thing. It's like the pebble in the pond, it gets, creates a bit of a ripple effect, okay? But that's okay. Do not fear to move forward, okay? In whatever area, okay? Um, <clears throat> and that, get the inspiration, okay? And the inspiration will then lead to, to the motivation of things, okay? Um, so develop the techniques, okay? And others can perhaps help you, coach you in these things. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, when we play games, uh, when we interact, uh, we do things from a friendly ba way, we um, can have an, an effect. And maybe there's some bit of roughness kind of going on, and it's okay, you know? But watch also, you know, then when we interact, uh, you know, in, in the emotions that kind of come up, there's anger. Create kind of similar things, so, but we can play rough, but if you show anger in that, it hurts, okay? So, you know, create joy, create fear, create hurt. Um, it's all in the attitude that we bring to it. The most important thing is, you know, is our attitude. So knowledge is good, but when you apply it with the right kind of attitude, okay? So again, coming from the heart, how am I putting this out, okay? And the more you act in it, this is helping you from the inside out, whatever levels of fear. I know I'm going through, you know, the stuff still, I'm cleansing as well, okay? And I kind of look forward to becoming, uh, you know, perhaps, can I say it, maybe more wholesome, <laughs> and uh, just to, you know, get out of that mode of the things that have help me back, and I know there's an awful lot, okay? Um, but, you know, it's the feeling that it creates. Um, and my biggest joy is when I am working with other people and I see them feeling better. You know, getting an 84-year-old walking better that is struggling, um, and they've been struggling for years, and just simply, why? Um, because, again, I share I care, I just do it, put in love. My intention, okay, huge. Wherever you, however you put the intention, it's massive, okay, the shifts. Okay, so don't ever forget what is your intention when you're about to do something. Do it with the right intention, even if it's not totally correct, even if you don't totally know exactly. But that energy coming from there, okay, coming from the right place, Okay, that will move you. Okay, so this all can help you to come out of your out of fears. And you know, perhaps again, like we said at the beginning there, right? What fears have you overcome in your life? 
And how did you do it? Okay, very important. So share it. I'm sharing my part here. Please share yours too. So share your story, your vulnerability. Um, you may really help someone else. And that's what we're here all about. How can we help? Okay, it's not all about us. You and me, we're all part of the same. We're all connected. We're all part of oneness, okay? Um, so whatever fears are you still working to overcome, I still am. Okay, dealing with things, okay. And I'm thankful because this keeps me challenged, okay. And but still, you know, holding you back. I just hope to kind of come through the other day, uh, one, one day, you know, maybe totally ecstatic. But life is all about bringing itself challenges, okay. If it doesn't, it doesn't go away, but it just becomes easier to deal with challenges, okay. So it's kind of like success breeds success. And but if you have the success, but, you know, if, if you also help other people, to have more successes. To me, that's where I get, I draw my energy from. I can go a whole day without food, but I can feed off the energy that I get from just doing what I'm doing, okay? Um, because it brings, literally, it brings joy, okay? So, yes, you can have pleasure of the things that you're doing. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a lot of people are involved. So if you feel that what you're doing, it's a job, and um, I met a lady the other day working in the medical field, she says, I had to quit. I no longer, my job became a burden. The money was good, okay? So don't only make the money the issue for you, okay? Uh, money, again, does not buy pleasure, all right? Um, so, so too much today, too. I just want to finalize with this. What do we see? It's suppression of expression because they're politicizing everything. Don't get caught in that trap, okay? Don't, for whatever political left, right, center, who knows, okay? All this garbage, okay? Um, <clears throat> don't go there, okay? And we know that so much of bringing that down, and I believe in this, that everything is shifting, okay? The frequencies are shifting. Things are being turned upside down, and it's happening faster and faster. And the controlling systems that are at hand are also crumbling. Just believe in that, okay? That's massive. And you know, how are they doing it? Try to suppress, keep everything down. Vaccines, GMOs, frequencies, okay? Fluoride. Now, what do we know about fluoride? Fluoride is in the Lancet Journal which is a medical journal, they have said that fluoride's a toxin because it suppresses your third eye. It dumps things down. In history, Hitler, Stalin, many other people, it's bringing the IQ down, okay? So avoid fluoride. These are things you can do, okay? And just don't believe me. Do your own research. The more you are empowered with this knowledge, okay, it's not about Richard said or so-and-so said. Do get a broader case. Get that knowing to travel from your head into your heart. Then you can feel it. And, you know, it's all about the feeling. It resonates. Your whole body is just like you get joy, you get whatever fear, you get anger, right? But get that vibration in your body. It becomes you, and then you start to resonate, and then you can move forward. Your intentions just become stronger because you have this knowingness about yourself, okay? That this is so, right? So, you know, and then on and on we can go on about these things, okay? So these are some practical things, these steps that you can take to set yourself free, okay? And get out of that mind prison, you know? You are a creator. Create great things. Okay, there's been many great creators. Emulate yourself after and see what some of these people have done. And does that come with opposition? Absolutely. Okay, and many people who said things, done things, created things, and they were suppressed for their ideas. But it's okay. Because in the end, as you move on out of this life, you have made, again, you're born alive to have a life. And to me, this is why I'm here. I want to finish off the, the rest of my journey doing as much as I can with whatever I have. And we are powerful. We are people. We are powerful. You are powerful. Okay? Again, it's not just about me. So please share. 
I do care. I do love you. And I thank you for being here with us this morning. I trust we'll see you again. We're going to do some other great things as well. Thank you. Yeah.